Thank you. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. And I'm going to roll this out of the way so I can wander around. Um, and I'm glad that we've got a good crowd today, in spite of this beautiful weather. Um, so what I want to do today is share with you uh, the lessons I've learned from traveling in Europe. And, you know, for years I was teaching budget travel tips. And, uh, and, uh, and then for years after that I was teaching an appreciation of art and history and culture. And then in the last decade, I find myself really passionate about teaching how travel broadens our perspective, how travel gets us out of our comfort zones, how travel lets us become more comfortable citizens of this planet, as well as perhaps more thankful Americans. And uh, it's sort of like how you evolve in your travels. First, you just want to pack light and catch the train. And then you want to be able to enjoy the museums and not be bored by all the great art and appreciate the cuisine and the wine. And then you want to broaden your perspective by becoming this uh, different kind of traveler. Now, I never wanted to travel in the beginning. Uh, my parents dragged me to Europe back when I was a ninth grader or something like that. My dad imported pianos from Germany. So I went over to see the factories, went to see relatives in Norway. And uh, I remember I was a 14-year-old with a bad attitude. And on about day two, it occurred to me, no, it's not all that bad. There was different pop, different candy. I remember statuesque women with hairy armpits. And um, <laughs> a couple years later, I was over in Germany again, and I was with my mom and dad, visiting relatives in Norway, piano factories in Germany. And I saw kids just a couple years older than me, uh, you know, with their Eurail passes and their little rucksacks and uh, exciting destinations clicking up in the departure board. I remember I was just, it was in the Copenhagen train station, the classic old station, you know, and tick, 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 Berlin, tick, tick, Amsterdam, tick, tick, Stockholm. And I looked at those kids, and Europe was their playground. And I remember looking at my mom and my dad, and I just thought, I don't need you guys for this. I mean, I could be over here without mom and dad, you know? And I decided, I'm going back to Europe every summer. I was a piano teacher. Kids wouldn't practice in the summer. I'm not going to push that. I'll see you in September. I'm going to Europe. And after a few trips, it was clear to me my trips were going smoother. I was learning from my mistakes. And I thought if I could just package the lessons from these mistakes into a class or a book, I could uh, teach people how to travel, and I'd have a good excuse to go back to Europe every summer and update my material. So that's what I do. For the last 30 years, I've been going to Europe four months a year, making all the mistakes, taking careful notes, losing my traveler's checks just to see what'll happen, and, uh, and coming home and teaching people how to learn from my mistakes rather than learn to travel smoother. Now, when I was a kid, I was idealistic, and I wanted to do something meaningful, and I thought, do I really want to dedicate my hard work, I was going to work hard and contribute, you know, is it a noble thing to teach, you know, Americans to gallivant around the world? And I was aware of all the hunger and the desperation south of the border and so on. And I thought about what travel is all about. I thought, you know, when I was, my very earliest memories of travel were friends of mine, you know, adults that went over to, uh, on vacation with their families and they went down to the Caribbean on big cruise ships and they took home photographs of what they called little dark kids jumping for their nickels. They'd stand on the deck of that cruise ship, throw their nickels off, and the kids would jump for it. And this was their greatest souvenir, how wealthy they were that they could get other kids to jump for their coins. And I just thought, well, that's, I mean, that's kind of uh, interesting, but it's not what I want to do. It doesn't bring us together. That exacerbates the difference between us and the rest of the world. And, you know, even today, that notion of travel, I believe, persists. For a lot of Americans, travel is still see if you can eat five meals a day and still snorkel when you get into port. <laughs> now, when I say that at a cruise convention, people fidget nervously in their seats thinking, where is he going with this? <laughs> but I don't say that in a judgmental way. I really don't. I, I, I just say that's not really travel. That's hedonism, you know? <laughs> and. And I don't say that in a judgmental way either. I got no problem with hedonism. I'm a Lutheran. But, um, but I just thought travel should bring us together. That's my little personal joy. I can define travel the way I want to in my work. And travel is an activity, when it's done well, that brings us together. And I want to teach people how to come together through their travels. And that's more important now than ever.